This project um, got its start from my previous video which was about NeoPixels, these individually addressable RGB LEDs. And I was thinking what kind of a project could I do that would make good use of them and decided that um, a system for my e-bike incorporating automatic lights and indicators would be really helpful. I envisaged having a strip of these LEDs on the back of the bike to, to make a rear indicator and light panel another strip on the front to do the same thing and perhaps one of the NeoPixels um, in some kind of a control panel up on the handlebars um, which would uh, provide status information about the bike and also provide the user interface to allow you to turn the indicators and lights on and off. So let's have a think about the electronics needed for such a system. We can organize the NeoPixels into a single strip and we can drive them with an Arduino Pro Mini. We can use a gaming joystick to tell the system what we want it to do. If we use a light dependent resistor we can have the lights turn themselves on and off when it gets dark and light. A beeper is another way the system can give us feedback. If we use a buck converter we can run the whole system from the bike's main battery which makes things much easier and convenient. For prototyping on this system I kept the electronics in a cardboard box in the battery bay on the back of the bike. The processor itself is on a breadboard with the other components and that breadboard is connected to the rest of the bike through these pins which are just made of header pin strips and um, hot glue. Each of these homemade plugs is coloured on one side, that one's green, and that tells you where to put it on the breadboard. You put the green edge uh, on the green strip on the breadboard similarly with the red and the blue. This is the brains of the system. The um, Arduino Pro Mini here provides the computing power. This large capacitor is to help with um, stability of the um, NeoPixel strings. And there's really not much um, on here to understand. This um, potentiometer is to divide the 29 point, maximum 29.4 volts from the bike battery divides it by 9 and feeds it to analog pin 0 I think. Um, these um, coloured strips are where the connectors go. This is for the back um, indicator bar. This is for the front indicator bar and this is for the control panel which is where the joystick um, the status LED and the light dependent resistor are. Um, so we put the plugs in here, the wires are routed currently externally, um, they can easily go inside the tube once I'm confident that that's how things should be. Um, but for the meantime this is a prototyping test bed so um, I'll leave them outside the frame and I'll leave this breadboard in place. It's not massively mechanically stable obviously but it does mean I can take it in and uh, take it out and put it in um, and that um, makes it very convenient for doing updates. This is the rear indicator bar. You can see the NeoPixel st strip stuck to the front with epoxy resin of what is actually um, overflow pipe. Um, originally white plastic sprayed black so it's stuck to that. The wires disappear into both ends because you need access to both the input side and the output side of the NeoPixel data. And there are two 3D printed end caps on there. These are the uh, three parts for the signal bars themselves. Um, this is the rear connector, so the, the cylinder or the pipe fits in here, is epoxied in here, and this connects to the um, rear uh, mounting point. Um, similar situation with the front one except that this time the attachment point is through the back and you can see this hexagonal hole here where a nut fits and a screw locates into that very nicely and these are the 3D printed end caps one goes on the end of each and each end of each signal bar these are the 3D printed parts for the control panel the two main parts of these two this is the bottom of the control panel and this is the top. Um, let's have a look from above. We can see these three holes here align perfectly with these three posts and this is how you 
hold the two halves of the thing together. Um, this hole here is where the um, power of the cable comes in for power and signals in and out. Um, this is a flex grip. This is the hole for the joystick to protrude above. This is the hole for the status LED and this is the hole for the light dependent resistor. This um, cuboidal post here is where the Xbox joystick sits and this little cup is stuck to the bottom of the Xbox joystick with epoxy resin. And what that means is I can sit the joystick very firmly on there and it won't move anywhere um, when I need it to be in use but when I want to make wiring modifications which would be difficult inside this box I can just lift this cup from the post. Um, those are the main um, elements. This is just the um, grip for the handlebar which sticks again with epoxy resin onto the back of the control box. I suppose it's worth pointing out that I made the top with a very long flange which overhangs the bottom uh, right the way to its base and that's mainly for weatherproofing so rain will hit the top and run off down the sides. This is the dome which sticks over the joystick and under which the joystick um, thumb grip is placed. So the thumb grip uh, is, an, is an additional dome that sits over the top of this dome and this hole is never exposed to the weather so the hope is this is rainproof. That's yet to be verified really but in fact there's not much in this control box which will take harm from rain and there are other measures I can take. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I may in fact um, adopt a different strategy anyway. We'll see. It's a prototype. This is an Xbox joystick courtesy of eBay. Um, it's two potentiometers as most joysticks are. And it, um, it didn't come with this but I also bought this. This is um, the thumb grip and that cup sits over there. So that's what it does. It's also got um, a switch action so you can push it down to complete make or break a switch circuit and then there are, there's a one potentiometer and the other one is there. So they implement the control interface. Well the system comes on when you turn the bike on. So the three beeps tell us that uh, all is well and um, the joystick is a four way thing pushing it forward um, turns the bike lights on pushing it backwards turns the lights off and there's also an automatic mode where the lights will go on and off depending on ambient lighting conditions as measured by this indicator at the front and the back of these signal bars as I've called them Here's the one at the back and it's it's mounted in such a way that it can wobble, it's spring loaded. I've found that they're very fragile, susceptible to snapping off, so there's a spring uh, spring loaded mount here which allows it to move. And then round to the front, similar sort of thing. Uh, this bar is a lot less prone to damage than the other one because it's flanked by the handlebars and it's also on the same stalk mounted on the same stalk that this reflector is so there's a degree of wiggle in there as well which helps with um, um, impact resistance so we'll turn the indicators on left for left rather right for right I'm forgetting that I'm looking at it from the back and if we put the lights on it will combine the light display with the indicator display like this and if we look at the back We'll get a similar thing except that the light component will be red instead of white. And in addition to that, um, we get the light flashing light indicator here. The colour of this light, by the way, it, it is um, depends on the capacity remaining in the battery. Currently the capacity is on green, which means it's fully charged. I think visibility is pretty good in all but the very brightest of head-on sunlight. 
and I do have a couple of ideas for how to tackle that problem. As it is, this offers me quite a lot. With an e-bike you need to hold the throttle open with your right hand or the bike slows down. Um, so this alleviates that and I also think it's a safety improvement as long as people can see the indicators and respect them um, then I really think it's a step forward. And of course it's extremely bright at night. Well I'll run the system for a while, bed it in so to speak, see what works, see what doesn't work, make a few modifications and then finally commit the thing to a more permanent installation. Um, questions and comments are very welcome. I haven't done uh, anything about the programming in this video because it's getting a bit long already but if that's something you're interested in do let me know and I may make another video for you. In the meantime I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, please rate, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff and uh, see you next time.